Good afternoon. Welcome to all of you for the second session on uh, electromagnetic field theory. So in the first session, uh, we saw the difference between scalar quantities and vector quantities. And we saw a few vector calculations. We saw the multiplication of a vector with a scalar and the product of two vectors. And in the product of two vectors, we defined the dot product and the cross product. We also saw in detail the representation of a vector in Cartesian coordinates, the definition of a unit vector and the standard unit vectors AX, AY and AZ in Cartesian coordinates. So these were the fundamental concepts of vectors which we saw in the first class. So in today's class, we will make a progress from there and uh, let me define the learning objectives for today. We will be looking at the operator, vector operator called del, pronounced as del and we will define three functions of a vector, the gradient, the divergence and the curl. Okay. And we will see what is the significance of gradient, divergence and curl. And again, dear students, these operations you will be using throughout your course. So it is very vital for you to understand what is the meaning of a gradient, what's the meaning of divergence and what's the meaning of curl. Very, very important for you to compute the rest of the uh, problems in uh, uh, field theory. So I really suggest along with me, you note down in a pen and a paper and do some uh, calculations as I explain to you how to do a certain things. Now, so let's start first with the operator. Now, what is the meaning of an operator? Can you recollect some standard operations, operators we know plus, minus, multiplication, division. So these are all operations. And the symbol you write plus, minus, star, slash, these are all operators. Clear? Now, an operator by itself is, has no meaning unless it has something to operate upon, which we call as the operands. For example, if you just put the plus symbol, it has no meaning. Only when I say 2 plus 3. 2 and 3 are the operands. Then the operator takes on a specific meaning and in this case it's the meaning of addition. Clear? So for any operator to have significance, we first need operands. Okay. So now in today's class, I will be defining a unique vector operator. Clear? I'll be defining a vector operator and three very important operations using this operator. Now this operator is pronounced as del and represented by an inverted delta. Clear? This is a standard symbol. You have no choice. You have to use that. So when you see this inverted delta, this is the vector operator del. Okay. Now, what does this operation do? Firstly, as I told you, it is a vector operate, operator and it's a differential operator. That means what? It has to do something with calculation of derivatives. Differential means derivatives. Okay. So this vector operator del is defined as follows. It is dou by dou x along ax. And what is ax if you remember? It's the unit vector along the x direction and dou by dou y of ay and dou by dou z of az. Clear? Now dou by dou x is the partial derivative with respect to x of any function. Partial derivative of a function with respect to x and dou by dou y is the partial derivative with respect to y and this with respect to z. And ax, ay, az are the unit vectors along x, y and z directions. Now I want you to pay attention to this operator if you see it is meaningless as such. 
do by do x of what right of what so unless you define what you want the derivative of what is the function for which you want to take the derivative so you say do by do x by itself has no meaning okay but then so as i told you an operator comes into existence only if it has an operand on which it can operate okay so now why am i calling this as a vector operator because you see it is a vector i have i have this in the x direction y direction and z direction so it behaves like a vector but it is not a vector right it is not associated with any parameter it's not like how you define force as a vector or velocity as a vector or di displacement as a vector it is not like that so it has no meaning unless you give it an operand on which it can operate that's why it's called as a vector operator is it clear very important for you to understand this because throughout my class today and in all the other classes possibly you will be coming across this every now and then right so now what is my problem here i have to define what are the operands right if i define the operand then this is the operator and i will use it to operate on the operand so based on this we have some specific functions we'll see what they are so quickly you look at the recap del behaves like a vector but it is not a vector quantity and it is an operator it's a vector operator vector operator doesn't imply that it should operate on a vector field only no right the operation is vector it can also act on a scalar field operator del has no physical meaning by itself or has a physical meaning only when it operates on a function appearing on the right side of it just as i told you a plus has no meaning unless you tell addition of what to numbers likewise the operator del has no physical meaning until you tell what is the function on which it has to operate okay so now with this clarity about the operator let's move on to the operations per se so the first operation we define with the del operator is called as the gradient okay now look at what i have written here gradient of a scalar field right so now let's quickly recollect what's the meaning of a scalar it's a function it has a value a magnitude but it has no direction right and what is the meaning of a field field is a function it's a function of the x y z coordinates so a scalar field is a function of the spatial coordinates x y z and this field when you give values of x y z has only a scalar number and has no direction attached with it that's the meaning of a scalar field example temperature temperature as a function of x y z coordinates pressure okay so that's the meaning of a scalar field so in this case i am going to use the vector operator del and operate it on a scalar field okay so let's see how we do it so let's define any scalar function phi so this function is a function of x y z coordinates it's a scalar function right then the gradient of phi is denoted as grad phi or del phi right here phi is a scalar function and del is our good old vector operator and we define it as we have what we have defined del what is del do by do x of ax plus do by do y of ay and do by do z of az so now i am giving it an operand and what's the operand i am giving i am giving the operand as a scalar function phi which is a function of x y and z are you with me yes so now let's see what i do do by do x of what do by do x of phi so that will give me do phi by do x so remember phi is a scalar function so do phi by do x gives me the derivative of phi with respect to x and this is along the ax direction 
Similarly, I have dou phi, dou by dou y of phi, which gives me dou phi by dou y along the a y direction and dou by dou z of phi, which gives me dou phi by dou z along a z. Clear? So del phi or the or gradient phi, this is how it is defined. So now let me draw your attention to a couple of things. So here del is the vector operator and phi is a scalar function. Okay. And del phi is the gradient of phi. And look at my right hand side. I get a vector because it has components along the vector directions. Right. So the gradient of a scalar field is a vector function. It's a vector. Clear? Yes. Simple partial derivative of a function, which you would have possibly done many times in mathematics. So let's take some simple example and see. Supposing I define a function u as x square. Right. So if you look at this function, u is the function. Okay, it's a function of x, y, z, but y and z, it doesn't depend on y and z, it only depends on x in this case. It's a scalar function because it does not have any direction. So now, how do I take the gradient? Look at the definition of gradient. It is dou by dou x of phi. Phi is my scalar function. So I need to take dou by dou x, dou by dou x of x squared which is nothing but 2x okay so i have 2x ax then i have dou by dou y of u which is zero because it does not depend on y similarly dou by dou z is also zero since it does not depend on z okay so the gradient of the function u equal to x square is simply grad u is equal to 2x ax so it is the gradient is present only along the x direction very simple right simply just take derivatives right so now let's see some more one more example simple example i define a scalar function u equal to r squared where r squared is defined as x squared plus y squared plus z squared so you see u the scalar function is dependent on x and y and z right so now what is dou u by dou x it is 2x dou u by dou y it is 2y and dou u by dou z is 2z so the gradient of u equal to r square will be 2x ax plus 2y ay plus 2z az I can take the common value 2 outside and write it as x ax plus y ay plus z az that is nothing but the vector r so you see here i have put a bold face and if you recollect from my previous class i use bold faces to denote vector quantities so what is my vector r here this vector r is nothing but x ax plus y a y plus z a z and what will be its magnitude magnitude will be x square plus y square plus z square under root so r square is this clear so i think now you got an idea of what is a gradient so gradient you take only for a scalar function like say distance or temperature or pressure speed a scalar function the gradient itself is a vector right and it's simply taking simple partial derivatives with respect to x y z so this done let us see what are its some of its properties since it is a derivative obviously the gradient of a constant is zero and vice versa okay so the gradient of a constant will be zero because its derivative will be zero. Now, if I have two scalar functions, phi and psi, then whatever is applicable to normal derivatives is applicable to the gradient because the gradient is a simple derivative. So the gradient of phi plus psi will be gradient of phi plus gradient of psi. 
so plus or minus right then the gradient of phi into psi you remember your derivative formula from high school and pu right the derivative of the function uv is equal to u into dv plus v into du same way the gradient of phi into psi is phi into gradient of psi plus psi into gradient of phi similarly gradient of phi by psi is psi grade phi minus phi grade psi divided by psi square you may not be using this too too often but these two definitely you will be using during the course right so these are the properties of a gradient so now what is the meaning of this gradient i told you you know very often what we do we only deal with mathematics we go on doing some numbers some calculations but you are dealing with physical parameters so you need to know the physical meaning of operations and results which you derive so what is the significance of gradient what does any derivative tell you you know supposing you do a derivative with respect to x df by dx do f by do x or do f by do y what does it tell you it tells you how fast the dependent variable changes with respect to the independent variables so for a small change in delta x what is the change in delta f what is the change in f so if you remember your definition of derivative right it is f plus delta f minus d of f divided by as delta x tends to 0 so for a very small incremental change in your input how does the output change that is what is your derivative gradient is nothing but a derivative so the gradient tells you how much something some thing means some parameter changes as you move from one point to another and these points are very close to each other the gradient is a vector function and which operates on a scalar function and it produces a vector whose scale or magnitude the magnitude of the the magnitude of the gradient is the maximum rate of change of the function at the point of the gradient so now what does this mean if you look at this previous problems we did right the gradient is 2x ax plus 2y ay plus 2z az the gradient is a function clear now you can evaluate the function at different points so it's not a unique number it's not one number clear so given x y z i can calculate what is the gradient at that point so it depends on x y and z so therefore the magnitude of your gradient gives you the maximum rate of change of the function at the point of the gradient wherever you are evaluating the point right evaluating the gradient so what is the maximum change you can have the have of the function supposing you are taking the gradient of temperature then the gradient at any point p will tell you what is the maximum change of temperature you can have at that point okay and the unit vector along the gradient is given gives the direction of that utmost rate of change so i am at a point right the magnitude of the gradient gives me the maximum change of the parameter and the direction of the gradient will tell me in which direction that maximum will occur so if i move along which direction the maximum will occur are you getting my point so the gradient at any point contains information about two things at that particular point what is the maximum change you can expect in the parameter under consideration and it will also contains information on in which direction the maximum temperature is going to occur maximum change is going to occur for example if you have taken the gradient of the temperature at a particular point right now the magnitude of the gradient will tell you by what maximum value the temperature can change okay and the unit vector along the gradient will tell you in which direction the temperature change will be maximum okay so now this is the physical meaning of evaluating a gradient you will be using this in your first part in electrostatics relating the electric field intensity to your 
electric potential. So this is a very nice example of a gradient. So supposing you have a ball in your hand and then at every point if you stick a pin which is perpendicular to the uh, surface of the ball then that will give me the direction of the gradient in a 3D picture. So these are all just to help you to visualize. You remember I told you that visualization is very important for uh, proper understanding of uh, uh, EM theory. Clear? So now we know quite a lot of things. In 20 minutes we have seen what is a vector operator and how it can operate on a scalar and what is the meaning of a gradient and what is its physical significance. Now let's move on to two more beautiful operations. You remember in the last class we discussed two types of products for a vector. What are the two products? You're right. Dot product and cross product. Right? So the dot product itself is a scalar quantity. The dot product is between two vectors but it is a scalar quantity and the cross product is between two vectors and is a vector quantity. Right? And then we saw that if you have two vectors a, b, then the dot product will give you magnitude of a into magnitude of b into cos theta a, b, where theta a, b is the angle between a and b. Therefore, all orthogonal vectors, the dot product will be zero. That means that the angle between two vectors is 90 degrees, cos 90 will be zero. So the dot product of any two vectors which are orthogonal will be zero. So all this we saw in the previous class. So now what I do, I have now I have a vector operator which looks like a vector. It is dou by dou x, ax plus dou by dou. It looks like a vector. So the first operation I have is the dot product of the operator del and any vector a. Right? In the previous case I did a, a, a bar dot b bar. Now I will do del dot a bar. So what is del? Del is my operator, this operator dot a bar, right? Now how do we represent a bar in Cartesian coordinates? We saw in the last class, I represent a, the vector a as ax along the x direction, ay along the y direction and az along the z direction. So this small lowercase ax, ay, az, they are all unit vectors. And this uppercase ax, ay, az, they are the component values, right? So this is the representation of a vector. And now ax, ay, az, they are all functions of x, y and z. Now don't ask me. You told ax is along x direction and how is it a function of x, y and z? This small x denotes the direction. So this AX means the component value along the X direction. It does not mean that it is a function only of X. It can be a function of Y and Z also. Is it clear? So therefore, these small X, Y, Z, these only denote the directions but not the dependence of the variables. So A, this AX and AY and AZ, they are all functions of X, Y and Z. Am I making my point clear? Fine. So now when I take the dot product, so here let us take this first component. Okay. So this I will take with this vector. So dou by dou x of uh, dou by dou x ax dot of ax into ax. So now I know I have to take the derivative of this component ax along which direction? Along x direction with respect to x. And ax dot ax is 1. So the product of the, the dot product of this term and this term will be equal to dou ax by dou x. What is this? The derivative of the component along the x direction with respect to x. Right? Now ax dot ay is 0. Remember two orthogonal vectors, the dot product is 0 and ax dot az is also 0. Therefore, I only have this term. Right, that is this. Now, let me take the second term. Now, ay dot ax is 0. 
and I have the second term I have dou by dou a y by dou y and similarly with respect to a z a z dot a x is 0 a z dot a y is 0 so I simply have dou a z by dou z right so you remember when you took the dot product of two vectors it was a x b x plus a y b y plus a z b z so here one vector is a z one component is a x and the other component is dou by dou x right very similar to your dot product now is this a vector or a scalar it is a scalar right it is a scalar because there are no directions here dou a x by dou x will give me a function and if I specify a point it will give me a value so there is no vector associated so the divergence of a vector is a scalar function it's a scalar quantity okay very easy to derive it let us see now I, I have taken simple functions now you look look at this this is a function force function f is equal to x squared y a x now you see this x squared y is the component along x direction but it's a function of x and y okay so this is your fx fx x the component of f along x direction now this is along y direction this is f y so if you see here the y component depends only on z and x and not on y and this is the z component it is 4y squared you see again the z component depends on y and not on z okay so this is the meaning of your ax or in this case fx fy and fz right and what is my derivative do by look at your derivative function divergence it is do by do x of the x component dou by dou y of the y component and dou by dou z of the z component so here what is my x component my x component is x squared y i want the derivative of this with respect to x what is that 2x y okay next dou f y by dou y so I want the derivative of the y component, y component with respect to y. This is the y component that is z cubed minus 3x. I want its derivative with respect to y. It's obviously 0 because it does not depend on y. Okay. And I want the fz derivative with respect to z. fz is 4y squared and its derivative with respect to z is obviously 0 because it does not depend on z. So what is the divergence of this function? I only have here this parameter that is 2xy. I have written out the divergence expression for you. It's dou by dou x of x squared y, dou by dou y of 3x minus z cubed, and dou by dou z of 4y squared. This is 0, this is 0, so I am left with 2xy. Okay? Now we'll take one more function. So what is the divergence? Dou by dou x of 3x plus 2z squared dou by dou y of x cubed y squared by z and dou by dou z of z minus 7x yeah so now if i take the derivative of this with respect to x it is 3 derivative of this with respect to y would be 2y x cubed by z 2x cubed y by z and derivative of this with respect to z will be 0 because sorry it will be 1 it is z minus 7x so here you have a minus sign so it is minus 1 okay so I have 3 plus 2x cubed y by z minus 1 that is 2 plus 2x cubed y by z clear very simple simple derivatives so now I want you to observe two things firstly the divergence is operated is is the operation of the operator del on a vector it is a dot product the divergence itself is a scalar function and it is a function of the coordinates x y and z so given the values given particular values of x y and z i can evaluate the divergence 
For example, in this problem, if I tell you, evaluate the direction of F at point 1, 1, 1. Okay, then it is 2, X is 1, Y is 1, so it is 2. So if I ask you to evaluate it at the point 3 minus 1, 4, it would be 2 into 3 minus 1, so it will be minus 6. So you can evaluate it, you, you can evaluate the divergence at any point. Okay, by itself it is a scalar function. There is no direction of the for the divergence. See, physically for you to know what a divergence is, you, if supposing you think you have a point, then the, the value of the divergence will actually tell you how the function diverges from the point. So if you look at this, see I have two coordinates x and y. So if, 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 if I plot arrows to show the value of the functions, you can see it is moving away. Okay, and so the, it has got positive values, you know, dou by dou x of vx will be greater than 0 because as I move along the x direction, the value increases. Here the length of the arrow is the value and as I move along the y direction also the value increases. So both are positive and if you look at this, as I increase the value, you know, it moves towards this, the value will decrease. So this has negative values. If you look at this, there is no divergence. Okay, because the field like the lines are moving parallelly so this field will not have any divergence this field has negative divergence and this field has positive divergence so uh, don't bother too much about this i put in this figure only for you to get an idea of the physical meaning of divergence and when we do electric field intensity you will have such plots you will understand what it is and i will revert back to that Okay, so quickly some important properties. Again, the divergence of a constant vector is zero because it's a derivative. And the divergence of A plus B is divergence of A plus divergence of B. And supposing phi is a scalar function and A is a vector function, then you know I can multiply a scalar with a vector. So the divergence of phi into A will be phi into divergence of A plus gradient of phi i can't have divergence of phi because phi is a scalar whereas divergence is defined only for a vector so the derivative of a scalar is the gradient so i have gradient of phi plus a into a okay and a vector field whose divergence is zero is called a solenoidal field a field like what we saw in in the previous case a field like this where the divergence is zero is called as a solenoidal field okay so we'll be studying some fields where the divergence is zero like your magnetic field static magnetic fields the divergence is zero so they're all solenoidal fields clear so what is the divergence the divergence is the dot product of the vector operator del with any vector and it gives you the derivatives of the components along the respective axis and by itself the divergence is a scalar quantity. So we have defined a gradient, we have defined a divergence. Now you know that between two vectors you have one more operator that is the cross product. So we have one more function which is called as curl of a vector. So what is A? A is a function of x, y, z. It's a vector function. Then the curl of A is denoted as curl A or it is the cross product of del and A. As before, A is AX along X, AY and AZ. And del cross A will give you the cross product of the vector operator with the vector. And in my last class, we saw what is the curl of two vectors. You remember? It's the derivative. So what did we write here? Ax, Ay, Az. Then these are the unit vectors. Then Ax, Ay, Az, Bx, By, Bz. Where A and B are the two vectors whose cross product you want to evaluate. So here my first vector is the vector operator. So I simply have dou by dou x, dou by dou y, dou by dou z. And the second vector are the, is the components along ax, ay and az. So this 
determinant is exactly similar to the cross product of two vectors. Only thing is now you replace one vector with a vector operator. Otherwise, it is exactly the same. Right? So now let's see some properties. Same thing since it's a derivative, the curl of a constant vector is zero. And curl of a plus b is curl of a plus curl of b. And curl of phi into a where phi is a scalar is phi into curl of a plus gradient of a cross uh, gradient of phi cross a these are some properties you may um, use it in some uh, later part and when you do wave theory you may use it for some derivations and a vector whose curl is zero is called an irrotational or conservative vector like how we called a vector whose divergence is zero, we called it as a solenoidal vector. Here it's called as an irrotational or a conservative vector field. Right? So now let's uh, look at some examples. Yeah. Same what we, we found the divergence for this. Right? We'll find the curl. What is the, how do I find the curl? So first, it is an evaluation of a determinant. The first row are the unit vectors, Ax, Ay, Az. The second row is the component of the first vector. Here in my first vector is the del operator. So it is dou by dou x, dou by dou y, dou by dou z. And the third row are the components of the second vector, in which case, in my case it is f. So it is x squared y, the x component, the y component, because this minus is there, so it will become 3x minus z cube and the z component, that is 4y squared. So the evaluation of this vector gives me the curl of vector f. How do I evaluate it? Just like how you evaluate any third order determinant. So what will you do in a third order determinant? This ax into dou by dou y of 4y squared minus dou by dou z of 3x minus z cubed just like how you do any any vector determinant any any general determinant okay and this into this into this minus this into this and a z into this into this minus this into this just like how you do any determinant right so you see i have just elaborated a x dou by dou y of 4y squared minus dou by dou z of this plus a y the two derivatives and dou z now you can evaluate this. For example, this is along x direction, this is along y, this is along z. So now I have to evaluate this with respect to derivative with respect to y. So this will be 8y minus derivative of this with respect to z is minus 3z squared. There is another minus here. So this becomes 8y plus 3z squared along ax. Then dou by dou z of this this does not have a z so this is zero this is also zero so this component will be totally zero and derivative of this with respect to x is three and derivative of this with respect to y is x squared so this is three minus x squared into a z this is the curl of the function f we already saw the divergence now I quickly want to draw your attention to the fact that this is a vector. The divergence was a scalar but the curl is a vector. Similar, you know your dot product of two vectors was a scalar quantity and the cross product of two vectors is a vector quantity. So um, let's see one more example which we did. This is this we found the divergence of this function. So let's do the curl. It's ax, ay, az. And then the x component, the y component and the z component go here. And then I take the derivatives and I get the curl. Right? Am I going too fast? I think as I told you, you should work it out with a paper. So I think you all have enough of mathematics to evaluate this uh, determinant and you don't require my guidance for that. Okay? So I, only one term I'll, I'll just quickly highlight. So ax into dou by dou y of 7x minus z minus dou by dou z of x cubed y squared by z. Similarly, the other components. 
and then take the respective derivatives. You get the components along AX, AY and AZ. Now if you look at this curl, it is a vector and it's a function. It's a function of X, Y and Z coordinates. So given values of X, Y and Z, you can evaluate the function, right? So that's what it is. So now, if you look at the curl, the curl would look something like this. You Do you recollect the figure I showed you on divergence? Actually, it shows you how the field diverges, diverges from a point. Okay. And here it shows you how it curls around a point. Let us say you have put a cap on a sink. Right. And you fill, fill the sink with water. Okay. And when you remove, remove the... Uh, Water, whatever you have closed, the trap you have closed, what will happen to the water? It will go round in circles and go into the sink. That's precisely what curling is. That gives you the curl of the velocity of the water. So the names themselves indicate what they mean. So when I talk of a curl around a point, so around this point, if I evaluate the vector field, it will go round like that. It curls around the point. And in a divergence, the field will diverge from a point. That's how the names uh, have been given to the uh, functions, divergence and uh, curl. Okay. Uh, so, today's class, uh, we saw divergence, we saw gradient and we saw curl and we also saw a lot of uh, vector operations in the previous class. So, now let me spend some time uh, discussing a few uh, problems uh, with you, how to solve. Uh, because, you know, the whole of field theory is about solving uh, problems. And as I told you, all of these involve vectors. And let's quickly spend some time. I don't think it's a waste because it, this A could have as well be a, a uh, electric field and B could be another electric field. So you may be needed to add two fields and this is how you would be doing it. So all these examples are very, very valid for what you're going to do throughout the course, right? So now supposing I want to add two vectors. So let me just say I have defined A and I have defined B. There are two vectors. So first find A plus B. Simple. This is just a recap of what we have done. A plus B. So whenever you add or subtract, you have to add or subtract the respective elements. So here it is 1 and here it is 5. So it will be 6AX. There is no Y here. So 2AY. And 3 minus 6 is minus 3AZ. So the addition of A plus B will give you this and the magnitude of this will be root of 6 square plus 2 squared plus 3 squared. Yes. So I find the magnitude of a vector like this. Next. Again, it is the same problem. I have just repeated A and B here. So what is the magnitude of 5A minus B? So this first case is the multiplication of a scalar with a vector. So it, all the components just get scaled up. So this will become 5ax plus 15az. And then I have to subtract it from b. Right? So it will be 5 minus 5, 0. There is no y here. So it is minus 2ay. And this is 15az plus 6az. So that would be 21az right now i want the component of a along a y what is that the y component of a there is no y component here so the component of a along a y is zero right then i want you to do 3a plus b again it is simple scaling so 3a would simply be 3ax plus 9az plus b so you add the respective components. Now I want the unit vector along 3a plus b. Right? Recollect how do you find the unit vector? What do you do for the unit vector? It is the vector divided by its magnitude. Why? Because this vector is magnitude into unit vector. Right? So if I divide it by the magnitude, I am left with the unit vector. So what is the vector? The vector is 8ax plus 2ay plus 3az. And the magnitude of this is root of 8 square plus 2 square plus 3 square. That is root 77. So the unit vector along 3a plus b 
is given by this. So this way you can do given any two vectors you can add them subtract them scale one add it with the other okay and all those functions you can do you can find the unit vector along any direction all those operations you can do okay so this is uh, part of what we covered in the first class so i'm going to uh, cover a lot of numericals so that you can do the problems correctly now let me take another problem this you'll be doing very often you'll be using it throughout field okay i have specified two points p1 and p2 so p1 coordinates are 1 2 3 and p2 coordinates are minus 1 minus 2 and minus 3 i want you to determine the distance vector between p1 and p2 okay so now here remember i will tell you slowly if p1 is the starting point and p2 is the ending point or you can call it as source and destination then the vector p1 p2 that is the vector joining 1 and 2 is given by the destination coordinates minus the source coordinates so the vector is directed from point x1 y1 z1 to point x2 y2 and z2 then the vector is defined by the vector is the line joining point 1 and point 2 is given by x2 minus x1 ax plus y2 minus y1 ay plus z2 minus z1 az please be very clear about it i have had a lot of my students come and argue by interchanging this and say ma'am the magnitude is correct but a vector remember is not only magnitude it is also the direction so if you write this as x1 minus x2 that will give you the vector directed from point 2 to point 1 that is 1 becomes the destination and point 2 becomes the source so you have to be very clear about this so if i want to be directed from p1 to p2 then it would be it would be minus 1 minus 1 minus 2 minus 2 minus 3 minus 3 so it is minus 2 ax minus 4 a ay minus 6 az from 2 to 1 it would be the reverse okay the magnitude of course of both would be the same root of 2 square plus 4 square plus 6 square that is root 56 so this you have to be clear again as i said you'll be using it in coulomb's law and in evaluating the electric field and so on so you should be very clear which is the source point and which is the destination point huh. now show that these two vectors a and b are perpendicular to each other now what should what is how, how do you show two vectors are perpendicular to each other so you remember I told you when two vectors are orthogonal or perpendicular their dot product is zero right. So whenever you want to prove two vectors are perpendicular evaluate their dot product if it is zero the vectors are perpendicular. Similarly if you want to prove two vectors are parallel right you evaluate the cross product. If the cross product is zero, the two vectors are parallel, right? So this is the procedure for finding out whether two vectors are perpendicular or two vectors are parallel. So now I have A and B. Let me evaluate the dot product. What is the dot product? Multiplication of the respective coordinates. So 6 into 5 plus 4 into minus 5 plus minus 5 into 2. Okay, so that is zero. So the dot, since the dot product is zero, the two vectors are perpendicular to each other. So this is how you can prove. So I have taken AB, it could be any two vectors. This is true for any two vectors which are perpendicular. Now, this problem is from uh, height, similar to what we discussed. So I won't spend too much time on it. I'll just have a brief discussion. I'm given vector M and vector N now i want to find a unit vector in the direction of minus m plus 2 m so what is minus m simply the negative of this so it would become 10 ax 
minus 4ay plus az and 2n simply scale up n by 2 would be 16ax plus 14ay minus 4az add. So this is my vector. Now I specifically took this because height uses this notation. A vector is written like coordinate. You know 2, 26, 10, 4. Okay. What he means is it is 26ax plus 10ay plus 4az. It is not a point. Even I can write a point P. I can write P is 26, 10, 4. What am I telling there? I am talking of a specific point P whose coordinates are 26, 10 and 4. But here it is a vector. So when I write a vector as 26, 10, 4, it means it is 26 AX plus 10 AY plus 4 AZ. How do I know it's a vector? You find out whether it is bold face or not. If it is bold face, it denotes a vector. Clear? So this is another shortcut way, way of uh, denoting a vector. I want the unit vector along this. So it is the vector divided by the magnitude. So what will be the magnitude? Magnitude is root of 26 square plus 10 square plus 4 square. And that works out to 0.92 AX plus 0.36 AY plus 0.14 AZ. If you take the magnitude of this vector, it will be 1. It's a unit vector. Then I want the magnitude of 5ax plus n minus 3m, right? So you can do n minus 3m and add 5ax to it. So all these operations are simple, whatever we have discussed. Magnitude of m into magnitude of 2n into m plus n, right? Magnitude of m you can find out. Magnitude of 2n you can find out. It will be twice the magnitude of n and then multiply it with m plus n all these operations you can do so uh, trust me you'll be doing a number of these operations when you are trying to evaluate fields with multiple charges and uh, maybe a combination of different field configurations like a point charge line charge etc so at that time all these will play a major role all right uh, now one more problem a vector field is specified as g is equal to now it's a field so once it's a field it will be a function it won't be numbers it is 24 x y along a x and 12 x squared plus 2 along a y and 18 z squared along a z now i'm given two points p and q so you see these are not bold face so that means they're simply points okay and look at g g is bold face so that is how you distinguish between a vector and a uh, point so g at p so what what does that mean p is 1 2 minus 1 so here in this expression for g substitute x as 1 and y as 2 and z as minus 1 so if i do this x is 1 and 2 so i get minus 48 here okay and then sorry it is plus 48 and then this is how much x is 1 so this will be 1 plus 2 3 so 12 into 3 36 and this is z square z is minus 1 so this would be 18 so the vector field g at p you see now height has written it as 48 36 18 it is written in a similar way to p but this is not bold face so this is just a point so what does this mean this means that the vector g is 48 ax plus 36 ay plus 18 az now i want a unit vector of g at point minus 2 1 3 so first i evaluate the vector it is minus 48 ax plus 72 ay plus 162 az that divided by this magnitude magnitude will be root of 48 squared plus 72 squared plus 162 squared that gives me the unit vector so i have minus 0.26 ax plus 0.39 ay plus 0.88 az so that gives me the unit vector in the direction of g at a particular point q now i want the direction unit vector of q from from point q to p 
So I told you what is it from Q to P? So Q is my uh, starting point and P is my ending point. So it is always ending point minus starting point. So it will be 1 minus of minus 2 that is 3 and 2 minus 1 which is 1 and minus 1 minus 3 you do it and then you divide by the magnitude you get the unit vector. Last one this is something you have to see. I want the equation of the surface on which the magnitude of G is 60. Very simple. I want this magnitude to be 60. That's all. So what is G? G is 60. Right? And what is the magnitude of G? 24xy whole squared plus 12x squared plus 2 whole squared plus 18z squared whole squared under root. That's all. That is your equation of the surface. So for it, any value of x, y, z which satisfies that equation, it will lie on the surface. So again, this kind of an exercise you will be doing when you want to find equipotential surfaces. So I get a function, I get a function and I want to have all points where the potential is, uh, you know, along the surface is the same. You will be using something similar to this, though potential is a scalar quantity. Okay. So uh, I think I will wind up uh, today's class. So we discussed the vector operator del and we discussed three important operations with it. The gradient, the divergence and the curl. The gradient is the vector operator del operated upon a scalar function and the gradient itself is a vector. The divergence is the, is the dot product of the operator del with a vector and the divergence is a scalar, one, scalar function. And the curl is the cross product of the vector operator del with another vector and it's a vector function. And we also saw some examples of vector operations. And uh, with this, thank you all. I would like to wind up today's class. Thank you.